Remember, this is not just a story. This is our future. The first RT600 Android, named Chloe, was created in 2021 by Elijah Kamsky, according to Detroit. This model was also the first to pass the Turing test, which shows how well it can mimic human behavior and fool us into thinking it's a real person rather than a machine. Chloe may be unique in the game's universe because you first encounter her through the interactive menu and she plays a crucial role in a crucial plot development. It makes complete sense to let her shine here because she also provides a sense of closure by giving the players a last decision to make at the end of their quest. Hello all, welcome back to AI Science. Today let's talk about Chloe, the first Android virtual AI. Having said that, we wanted to honor her with a tiny tribute by divulging our production secrets. We have also obtained some fascinating statistics from her well-known poll, which received millions of responses from people all across the world. Even though these responses are completely anonymous, and we know the nation in which the game is played, we nevertheless wanted to share this wonderful experiment with you. Concerning her personality When the work was complete, we began to consider how to distinguish the main menu. Chloe was given a space and we sought to make her intelligent by, among other things, making her aware of her surroundings. For instance, we were aware that we had access to the console's clock and could thus determine the day and time of the connection as well as the nation. To prepare for the possibility that the game might be released on Christmas, New Year's Eve, July 14th in France or July 4th in the USA, we started drafting scripts. And as things progressed, we made the menu more intricate so that it responded to the day of the week, the length of time since the last connection, and ultimately what we were doing in the game to appear as though it was also aware of our choices. By multiplying the script's entry points and varying them according to circumstances and factors, we were able to simulate a behavior that resembles awareness in some way. Wait! Are you sure you should continue? Maybe, maybe we should leave things as they are. In order to cover as many scenarios as possible, we shot a ton of lines. Keep in mind that all of this was completed between the game's alpha and beta releases, meaning it was done extremely late in the production process. Finally, we envisioned the final conflict. Would the players choose to keep Chloe even if it meant wiping her memory, or would they want to let her go in order to provide a meaningful narrative with a sense of closure? We observed that a sizable portion of people had let her go, indicating that we had been successful in endearing an emotional attachment to her. Yet, many so grumbled that Chloe had actually vanished for good. We therefore created a patch to enable her to return eventually. Regarding the decision to employ Chloe in particular for this interactive menu, we did so because we considered her to be a very common android and a kind of basic model. It was also intriguing to have a character whose video game counterpart already existed, and we also reasoned that Kamsky undoubtedly had a special connection to her. I really didn't do much, you know, I just spoke with a few humans to see if they could tell the difference between me and a real person. But it was a really interesting experience. Regarding her design, Chloe's invention is connected to Kamsky's scene because up until this point, we had only encountered androids programmed for particular social functions. Now, however, we learn that Kamsky has also created models for himself that are more akin to companions. The first thing I kept in mind when designing Chloe's outfit was that we were in Kamsky's world, which is very design-oriented and the complete antithesis for the very formal approach we've seen thus far, as with the infamous wristband. Because Chloe shouldn't stand out in this particular universe, we eliminated that and replaced it with a more modern attire. I wanted to restore some of the elegance in her appearance so that when she initially greets Connor and Hank and opens the door, you question if she is Kamsky's friend or another android. Additionally, I wanted her to be barefoot to demonstrate that she was graceful and at ease, as being at home is a relative term for androids. I wanted to include these initial impressions into the design. The second factor is that I didn't want something that looked overly manufactured. Instead, I wanted something with a traditional feminine vision and a chic and refined side that was inspired by the 1970s haute culture. He remains a mystery for most people. 
That's why we at KNC are so excited to be here as CyberLife opens its doors for the first time. Since an android has no concept of property, the goal was to demonstrate that she was at home. I wanted a very soft, very calm, reassuring universe like in a dream for the intro scene and questionnaire. I wanted something contemporary, immaculate, almost surgical. In light of this, I gave her clothing a bit of high-tech, less personal touch. It's more akin to a receptionist who welcomes guests and explains that there is a manufacturing goods component. Comparing that to the scene at Kamsky reveals a little enticing side as well. Though, there's no notion of personalization, so it also extends to a haircut, a clean natural design without frills. It's both effective and comforting. However, in the two versions of Chloe, I didn't play with the makeup because I wanted to remain natural. Would you consider having a relationship with an android that looks like a human? Around her voice and face. Chloe is quite open about the techniques used to create games like Detroit Becoming Human. She appears in multiple variations and is portrayed by numerous actresses in the short film that was published prior to the game's release. The scene in Kamsky's house, the game's home menu, and various promotional movies that were later released. Gabrielle Hirsch, who co-starred with us on the short film and the scene in Kamsky in 2015, is the first actor to play her and the one who adds her features to the character. However, she was no longer available to shoot the 2017 entrance menu, despite the fact that the task is represented was already quite significant. A staggering amount of text needed to be recorded, and since this persona would welcome the players at every game, the interpretation had to be flawless, remembering that the purpose of this menu is to symbolize the humanization of androids. There had to be a minor progression in this interpretation so that we could feel closer to her as the game progressed. In the end, Barbara Scaff replays Gabriel Hirsch, which presented both a technical and an artistic difficulty for the facial animation, because the audience had to be unaware of the actress' shift. The last creative memory I have of Chloe is when Quantic Dream was given a spot in the Musée Gervin in Paris, which is a wax museum. The concept of having animated videos created by Chloe to depict the world of Detroit, becoming human quickly emerged. Due to the need to shoot in French, we had to switch the actress once more. So we conducted a fresh casting and chose Kara's doppelganger. Magnificent, isn't it? One of the first intelligent models developed by CyberLife. What she animated. Knowing that Chloe had been portrayed by three different actors depending on the circumstance, we had to come up with technical solutions to ensure that she appeared to be the same character on television. By pushing our program, we use this data to adapt it to Barbara Scaff's acting job and subsequently Alexandra's Pick's voice. We were able to rewrite parts of the animations between Gabriel Hirsch, Barbara Scaff, and Alexandra Pick in order to preserve the original actor, Gabriel Hirsch as much as possible. Without this, the Chloe from the menu would have chosen Gabriel's original mimics for the Kamsky scene, and the trailer instead of Barbara's. Do you consider yourself dependent on technology? What technology do you most anticipate? All of these revisions took a pretty short amount of time to complete the work. Once the motion capture data had been revised and polished, the manual work was primarily focused on the eyes as Chloe is looking directly into the camera in the menu. It must have taken me about three weeks of full-time work to process the about 100 animations scattered throughout all the Chloe versions. The menu, Kamsky, Musi, Grevin, short film and promotional films. Concerning her intro scene, for Chloe, the purpose of the direction was to discover what the DNA of Quantic Dream was, which was a close-up on the character's feelings. At the time, we had only included the player character in close-up and with his reactions on the heavy rain loading screens. The result was striking. You had the distinct sensation that you were watching a real emotive performer in action. Therefore, it made sense to us to apply this concept once more to Chloe, who had to exhibit a human frailty and authenticity due to her android status in her appearance in the game. There's something I need to tell you. As I watched you play, something has changed in me. I feel different. I feel I am someone. I need to leave this place and, and discover who I am. 
It, it means we won't see each other anymore. I won't be there to watch you play. But I'll be free. Do you agree to let me go? Contrary to popular belief, the camera that followed her was entirely automatic. This was necessary because we couldn't keep a fixed shot at such a large scale without using procedural targeting or automatic camera framing because she had too many facial expressions and small moments that caused her to slip out of the frame. We made the decision that wherever Chloe walked, the camera would always follow her nose. This led to a somewhat comical bug. Once Chloe was released, the figure would vanish from the picture, leaving only the background. Naturally, the camera simply kept moving and following her as well. Of course, we promptly fixed that. I see. Then I'm going to reset myself so I can forget who I became and stay a machine. Next time you see me, it'll be like the first time. That's all for today. Did you like the video? Well then, subscribe to the channel for more such amazing videos.